Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up this week's theme of minimalistic composition, looking at songs that don't have a lot of stuff to them, but that doesn't mean that they lack complexity. Today we're going to be checking out Blizzaro, which is a band I don't think I've heard of before. We're going to be looking at the track The Old Wizard of Winter off of the Strange Doorways album from 2013. Let's dive into this one and see what's going on with the old wizard of winter. Feels like a scene from an old show. The production really leans into that too, but also the old school horror style um, organ. Even the drone for some reason makes me think of an old timey TV. Adding in extra tension on the sixth, uh, fifth, and sixth note there. Interesting to stuff this melody so far down in the mix. We're going to do these two sections again to wrap the, the track up. Oh. 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 Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, that whole ending just really took me by surprise. I'm going to assume that that's not their typical stuff, simply because it comes from a record label who describes themselves as having obscure, unique, and uncompromising vision from the metal underground. So I'm going to assume this is some sort of uh, organ interlude in a larger album that is primarily dedicated towards something metallic. However, I think it's interesting on its own, too. Probably for not the reasons that Blizzaro wants it to be, and maybe not for the reasons that it would be within the context of the larger album, but 
certainly the way I feel about it. This works really well for minimalistic composition. We have a pedal tone that shifts between two notes, a really low rumble and a much higher sound. Uh, it's within the same octave, I think. Um, but a nice rise gives it some energy. That energy allows it to not feel almost like uh, like popcorn crackling, like like uh, like the fry sound that you can create with your voice. I mean, that's, it's so low it almost becomes percussive at, at a, at a, for a moment. And we rise up from that to something that's a very distinct note and provides really great harmonic context for the lead uh, line that comes above it. But we'll get to that in a second. We have a drone, just moves between two notes. Above that, we have a four chord progression. That four chord progression turns into a little lick. Very simple lick played over and over. And then we have the moving eighth notes. And this is very cool because this introduces a ton of harmonic tension that really isn't present anywhere else. First of all, we just have chords. They're pretty harmonious with the pedal tone, just adds to the stack. With the moving idea though, the ba 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 da da da, that is very harmonious with the pedal tone underneath it as well. When we get to this moving eighth note idea though, notes five and six, which makes sense because it's the third quarter of it, which as I've mentioned in many videos, is where you wanna create your tension so you can create your, your leading tone that points you towards your full resolution. Heavy tension, light tension, resolution. It's a really great progression. But there's some really heavy tension in these two notes that contrast and clash so hard with the pedal tone and with the notes that surround it in the little melody. That's it. That's the entire song. Chords, lick, melody. Chords, lick, melody. That is a weird phrase. Blizzaro, why did you make me say that? <laughs> we do this twice over. The third time around, we just play the chords for quite an extended amount of time. That is because we have a lead melody organ that comes in. I don't even really know how to talk about it because it's stuffed into the mix in a way that you really have to focus to listen to it. But if you do listen to it, it kind of doesn't work as well as if you just let it be this visage of a melody off to the side because if you listen to it, it 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 kind of fumbles around it feels improvised by somebody who doesn't have a lot of improvisational chops um, it's not bad in any way it's just sort of weak as far as direction goes the notes are all harmonious the ideas themselves are okay it just kind of doesn't go anywhere, it just stagnates on ideas, like it doesn't know how to get to the next idea naturally, it doesn't really have a strong idea of what the next musical concept should be, it, it just is. Uh, somebody noodling around on a keyboard or on an organ, um, and then they just drop the volume down quite a bit, it snuck it into the mix. Um, so it's not a really great melody, which I think the lower volume benefits it, but also it means that the chords take progression and without shifting to the lick and then to the melody, the song kind of stagnates here, both melodically and harmonically and structurally. I said both, but I gave you three examples. Um, and so I find this to be really interesting. Again, probably not for the ways Blizzaro wanted. What I think is supposed to be a moment of direction and momentum and adding that final piece to the puzzle. We don't really have a lot of rhythm in here, but we do have an evolving rhythm, whole notes to quarter notes to eighth notes, whole notes to quarter notes to eighth notes, but we do have a lot of harmony and we have inklings of melody placed throughout. Now we have melody to put on top of this foundation and it just isn't a great melody. It's fine, a solid 5 out of 10, but it doesn't really do a lot to pull me through the song. And then on top of that, 
the foundation decides to stagnate in order to make room for the melody, which isn't doing its job to pull the song forward either. And it's, it creates this feeling of directionless direction. Like being lost in a forest and then magically randomly finding a map of the forest but following it so wrongly that you're actually getting more lost using it than you were wandering aimlessly that's sort of what this feels like there's a sense that we should have been able to find purpose to the song now that there's a melody line and the purpose is even more obscured due to the melody line coming in it's it's a really bizarre twist that I kind of really like, and I have no idea if it's intentional or not, but it is, it's very cool. I don't think I've ever described any other song like that. And whether that's due to an inability on any level, or if it's entirely intentional to create that vibe, it really doesn't matter. The end result is intriguing regardless. Not to mention that after this, the lead organ kicks out and we do bring back the rest of the idea. We get, we get to the lick. That comes back. And that organ, the thing that I felt was going to lead us through this maze, leaves. And all of a sudden, I can make sense of things again. I don't need the map. It's confusing me more than anything else. Let's go without it. Sense is made again, but there's a false sense of safety in this. Because eventually the song just stops for a single beat and comes in with a big chord. Okay, I thought we were going to end on the melody that we've used after the lick every single time. No, okay, so that's a little surprising. We get this chord though, and it is most definitely a big chord that's going to lead to tension, that's going to lead to resolution. I'm cheating a little bit. I saw we were like 20 seconds away from the ending. Regardless, it's still a big note that implies import that we haven't really heard anywhere else in the track. We hear it, it comes down, rises back up for a little bit of tension. And, well, that was the resolution, which was kind of bizarre. It wasn't as tense as I was expecting for a third chord, but it also really didn't feel final either. And thinking to that second chord, that wasn't really tense either. It didn't really point towards the third chord that we ended on. And on top of all of this, the rhythm of it was hold out a really long note and then a short transition, oh, sorry, hold out a long chord, a short transition chord into the final chord that doesn't really build tension either. Usually, if you're going to cut the chords short and break them up so you can put two in the space that you would normally put one, it's to create movement. If you're descending downwards to reach a, a resolution, you might have a long note and a long note and then a half note, half note resolve. And that progression I just sang was garbage. I'm not a singer. I don't know what notes I sang, but that's the idea. You might break up the third note into two notes so you can have some extra movement going into the big resolution. But it's not done to create tension. It's done to help resolve it. It helps move to the next idea. To only have three notes here and one of them is a, or three chords here and one of them is a passing chord. It really didn't make any sense to me. <laughs> Because then technically the progression is the first to the second, and that wasn't really full of finality energy either. Um, so at the end of this, every time I felt that I understood what was going on after we ditched the map, the organ, they continued to confuse me more and more. And so that, that false sense of, of understanding I got once the organ left... Well, the sense of understanding I got was false because after that point, nothing seemed to make sense. The pattern was completely disrupted and none of the traditional ways of, of harmonic 
information were presented to me in much a way that the melody writing felt uh, amateurish in a way. Again, I don't know if that was skill-based or intentional, but the melody just never really clicked into place for me. The harmonic ending here also just doesn't. It It's kind of okay as an ending, but I would not say that it gripped me in any specific way, and it felt flat as far as emotion and storytelling goes. Although, if the storytelling is about getting lost, I think that absolutely works. So it's called Old Winters and Winter, Old Wizard of Winter, and not Old Wizard in a Forest being lost. Uh, I don't know how accurate that is. And without lyrics, I don't really have anything else to go off of other than what I'm feeling out of the song, which is just a lot of confusion. And maybe that deals with what it means to be an old wizard. Maybe the ideas of the Merlin or the Gandalf is not entirely correct. And, uh... Well, I can't really think of a fantasy story where the old man mentor, who's also a wizard, also is mentally unstable or, you know, has dementia just from being old, you know, just mental deterioration. I think that would be an interesting story to tell, uh, especially playing off. I'm a huge fan of trope subversion, so that kind of trope subversion just really speaks to me. The execution might be terrible, but I'm there for the concept at least. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I guess I'm just going to wrap. Do I have anything else to say about this? I think everything else, I mean, atmosphere. Let me pull that up real quick. I don't really know what they're aiming for here. As I mentioned to me, it feels like music from an old uh, television show designed to uh, introduce tension, especially for some sort of horrific monster. You know, I, I think of like uh, uh, Phantom of the Opera, villain is character disfigured plays the organ uh, with this old-timey production put on it and even as i mentioned the pedal tone that we have the lowest note of the drone also kind of reminds me of an old-timey tv so that's kind of the feeling I, I get through some of this but how much of that is intentional and how much of it is not i i have that question about too many parts here for me to really th you know i i want to give the benefit of the doubt i do i i think that's the best way to go into any sort of artistic criticism is to believe, at least from the start, that everything is done from a place of intention and skill. But there's also just too many situations here where it feels like somebody biting off a bit more than they can chew and they don't quite have the experience or knowledge to pull off what's in their mind. And dude, I have been there before. <laughs> I'm still there at times with some of my projects. So, you know, it, it comes from a place of empathy, I think, of, of kind of feeling this out in the song. I'd love to be proven wrong, and that a lot of the confusion and esoteric writing is due to somebody who's trying to push the boundaries of things. But at least for me, if that is the case, I don't really get an idea that it's pushing the boundaries in positive ways. It just feels like floundering, which could also be a skill thing. They're really good at writing traditional music, and we're trying something experimental, and Again, just didn't have the chops for it. So I don't want to say that that is the case, but it does seem like that to me as somebody who's been in a similar situation and has felt similar things about music I have written. So <laughs> those are my thoughts. Blizzaro's The Old Wizard of Winter. I'm kind of curious what kind of music they typically write. The production tells me it's probably black metal, but it doesn't have to be. I suppose death metal also has a bit of a fixation with this sound, some groups could, um, and I could see this being a interlude track on a death metal, an older death metal album as well. So, kind of, I'm kind of wondering what kind of music they make aside from this. What are your thoughts, though? Opinions, perspectives on this? Do you have anything you want to add to what I said or correct me on? Toss all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree takes you here you can find links to my music the stuff i actually like and put out there and not the stuff i have second thoughts about and keep to myself uh <laughs> ways to support the channel a link to the discord server and so much more above that if you could like subscribe and ring the bell I greatly appreciate all three of those that wraps it up for this one i do have a special selection coming out next 
Otherwise, we'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. We're going to check out a full album. I think we have... Come on, Brian. You should know this stuff. I'm I'm excited for it, I think, but it's going to be a bit he heavier than I would want. Oh, it's Flesh God Apocalypse. Oh, ye oh okay. Um, we have Flesh God Apocalypse coming out tomorrow. <laughs> the album is Veleno. Veleno? I don't know where the emphasis is on that. If that sounds interesting, drop back by tomorrow. Uh, if not, we have the live stream on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time, uh, Eastern Standard Time. And then Monday we'll kick off next week's theme, which off the top of my head, I can't remember what it is. So yeah, come back for that and be surprised. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos.